Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Hi hey there, I'm Red, and today in the Den of Tools, we will be modding one of those great Yukon workbenches from Harbor Freight into something with a little bit of additional storage and features. Yeah, that's the same one that I was uh, touting right there after Christmas, and I picked me up one of them, and I can say I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great bench, but I thought it could be so much more, so... I decided to tackle that little project here, and we're going to go over it here shortly. Uh, after that, we'll be talking about the winner from our free CRKT knife giveaway. Yeah, I know that's why y'all really came here. And then after that, we'll also be doing another small biz shout out. Talking about you guys and gals who run your own small businesses and are the heart of America's economy. But before we jump into that, today's episode is brought to you by, yep, the Den of Tools online store. The DOT store has apparel and merchandise sporting those same designs you'll find on a fashionable bears everywhere. For those of you asking for stickers and patches, yeah, I get it. The bear's working on it. I promise. I probably have something for you by the end of the month. I just got to find a supplier that, that I like that I can work with. But, you know, enough about that. Let's get into our project. After determining the appropriate length for my risers based off of the size of the pegboard I was using and basically what I felt for me would be a good work height for being able to reach for tools and such, cut your two 2x4s two to length, clamp them together, and then drill your two holes that you're going to uh, put the bolts through to attach them into the riv nuts in the back of your cabinet. Then you want to determine how far down past the top of the workbench uh, you want your 2x4s to go to give you the kind of stability that you need. Mark that uh, across both of them at the same time using a square. Um, and then I bolted uh, each 2x4 to the table in the position I wanted it to be in and then used the same drill bit to drill through it to create a starter point on the back of the sheet metal for my step drill bit. And here I'm just taking, as I said, my step drill and using those marks that I created allow me to not worry about it uh, jumping and skittering all over the sheet metal. It's easy to punch right through this thin metal with that. And now comes the fun part, breaking out the RivNet kit. Now I admit I've never used one of these before and having uh, heard these talked about in the assembly, uh, the build, if you would, of, the, of this cabinet, I was intrigued to try them out. Installing these rivet nuts is super easy. It's just like any other kind of rivet, except in this case, it's threaded. You screw it right on there, stick it in there, bear down on it. Yeah, I said bear. Just bear down on it. And then you just use the knob on the back, that knurled knob, and you just unscrew it. You might have to pinch it in just a little bit to get the tension off the back of the, the plunger. I'm not sure the technical term for it. But uh, as you can see, and I've yeah, sped up the time because it's a little bit boring, but they're super easy to install. Then we just take the boards, set it up there, mount it up, drive it in, throw the first one in a little bit loosely. Want to make sure I had room, you know, wiggle room to get the, the second uh, bolt in there. Then I just pop that in there. Made sure the board was right where I wanted it, tighten it down, and I'm good to go. Then I just repeated the process uh, on the opposite side. It was, you know, it, it really is probably the. the one of the quickest and easiest mods you can do to a bench like this and really get a lot out of it. And here we are pre-drilling the masonite, I mean, hardboard pegboard. Uh, you could probably get away with not doing this, but the, the screws I was, I was using for this didn't want to bite through that initial layer, probably because I was being an idiot and using the wrong bit. I was using a Phillips on a Torx head. These were some screws that I'd seen. Uh, is it Steve Ramsey? Steve Ramsey over at Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Got to had to ask the big bear over there. <laughs> He's helping out. Anyway, I, he swears by these, and I've used uh, deck screws uh, quite often. Not that these are deck screws, but they're, they're kind of similar, and they're the kind of screws that come with a dedicated uh, bit with them. And they're just so much more reliable and easier to use. Uh, although sometimes they tend to bite a little bit more than you want. Uh, as you see on that one, I drilled all the way through. Uh, and that's not going to work for me. Luckily, I had a little uh, washer nearby. So I just snagged that. And as you can see, that works just fine. It's a band-aid for this. But you know what? It doesn't have to be pretty. It's on the backside. It just works. Well, the battery on the camera died, so I uh, we're skipping ahead a little bit here. 
So I've installed, you know, we got both risers going and we got the uh, cross piece going across the top. Uh, I've mounted a, a, a webcam kind of device to it. It's a Raspberry Pi for those of you guys who follow that sort of thing. Mounted a power strip over there. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there. I just, it looked good at the time. Pro tip, those red parts, those accessories for the other cabinets, they work on these cabinets as well. Later, I decided to replace that Raspberry Pi with a, a separate camera mount. This is a, a, I just used a piece of 2x4 coming out with a swing down uh, so I can have my little GoPro mounted there. So I can adjust the height of that up and down. And then when I need to, I can just swing it out of the way. Makes it a lot easier to film a lot of those tabletop kind of uh, videos. And here you can see that same camera just from the position of standing at the bench. That's uh, the bear's take on the pegboard rolling workbench combo. Husky has something like that too. Theirs looks a little something like this. Uh, they want $40 on top of the regular workbench price to, uh, to add that on there. I, I've seen it. I wasn't impressed with it. I thought it was a little small. Let me throw the other one up there. There you go. I realize it's not a perfect side-by-side -side kind of photo, but as you can tell, you know, I, I think, you know, I definitely have a lot more, you know, real estate available to me with the pegs. I've got, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's uh, a lot more uh, usable around the shop. Uh, not knocking what, uh, what Husky does. They have some great products over there, but it just wasn't for me. Not, well, not what the bear was looking for. Total outlay for this project was I, I spent about eight bucks on the Masonite pegboard. Oh, sorry, hardboard. <laughs> I went in the store asking for Masonite. They didn't know what I was talking about. They had to go call an old guy over to do some translating, apparently. He came out, he's like, you're showing your age, bud. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, they don't call it Masonite anymore. Uh, they, they call it hardboard. <laughs> My bad. Anyway, I spent another nine bucks or so on, on uh, three uh, two by fours. Nothing special. You don't, they don't need to be pretty. Just make sure they're straight. Make sure you get kiln dried. You don't want to get a, any of those cheap green two by fours. When you, you build this project and those things dry out, they will torque up your bench something fierce. Let's see here. What else? Uh, yeah, I spent um, 20 bucks on a RivNet tool. RivNet? Riv, RivNet? RivNet tool from Harbor Freight. Uh, that's more of an investment. I got other plans for that. I think it's going to come in handy around the shop. I know at least three other projects I'm planning to do using that. Uh, so anyway, so for the cost that's half that from Husky, I got something that has about twice the usability of it. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I did think about painting the whole thing black, you know, make it all look all pretty and finished and stuff. But three issues came to mind. First of all, it's still cold out. I'd have to heat up the whole shop, run the heater. I uh, pay for a bunch of electricity just to get it heated up so I can stink up the place with uh, with spray paint. Secondly, the lighter color wood is actually better for lighting in my videos. The lights reflect better off of it. And lastly, I'm a guy and it's a tool in my shop. Why would I care if it looks pretty? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sure I just macro aggressed there or something. But enough about that. So tell me what you liked or didn't like about this build. What would you have done better? Post your comments below. Believe it or not, the bear likes to hear your suggestions on what I may have done wrong or what I could do better. That's because I believe that learning is a journey, not a destination. You can always learn to do something better. And I'm always, I, you know, I don't believe I'm an expert at everything. <laughs> Just ask the wife. She will tell you I'm not an expert at, well, anything if you can ask her. So now, as promised, let's talk about what you really came here for. Find out who the winner of the CRKT knife giveaway was. Drum roll, please. No, no drummer. We don't have a drummer. Wow, we're a rinky dink operation around here. Anyway, the winner is Val um, Stachowski, Stachowski, Staka Jetski. Uh, seriously, I think you people just make up these names to mess with me. Anyway, Val, congrats. I'll be sending you an email today to arrange shipping, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks, everyone who entered, all 300 or so. You know, you know who wasn't a winner? That's me. <laughs> I was stunned at how few people entered the drawing. I was hoping to make this a regular thing, but I guess you guys already have all the stuff you need. So I think that'll be our last video contest for a while. Just for your uh, education there. My videos average around 7,500 views, and this video got just over 2,000, making it the least watched video in over a month. <laughs> And of those 2,000 views, only 300 people bothered to enter. 
Who knows? Maybe I just picked a knife you already had, and I'm just the only fool who just found out about how cool they are now. Enough about the bear and his little pity party. I know. I know. It's all right. It's all right. Let's do a SBSO. That's a small business shout out for you guys and gals. Today's shout out goes to Vincent Rossi from Albany, New York. Vincent has a, what did he call it? Seal coating business. No, 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 that, that's seal in a coat. Seal coating, black magic seal coating and property services. During the winter months, uh, Vincent mostly does tile work, but in the summer, he busts out his custom work truck. With that, he can seal and stray parking lots, fill cracks and potholes, and other related repairs. This guy works hard, averaging about 400 driveways a summer. Guys, if you ever seen anybody out there working with this kind of stuff, it ain't pretty. It smells... Oh, it smells. Let's just say it smells. It's a hot, sticky mess. And this guy, you know, busts his little furry behind out there trying to support himself and his little girl. So why don't you check him out over on Instagram at Black Magic Seal. And he also has a Facebook page. I don't, sorry, I don't have it here for you below. Hey, Vincent, why don't you uh, make a comment down below and let the uh, guys and gals here give them some of your contact info so they can check you out. Remember, that's Vincent Rossi from Albany, New York. Seal coating. Yeah, stylish, huh? Yeah. I kind of look a little bit like him, don't you think? He's kind of, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And always, guys and gals, just remember the small business shout out is not sponsored. No one's paying the bear to do this. I do it, you know, just out of my love of small businesses to help, you know, throw them a bone. They work hard. They're the heart and soul of our economy. You know, they they have enough things that they need to deal with. So when we can help them out, I always like to help them paw. All right. I better stop before I bust out a flag and break into a song here. Uh, so guys and gals, it's that time. Please throw the bear a like, comment below, share a video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell. Remember, every time you ring a bell, a bear doesn't eat you. True story. And if you're feeling generous, then check out the Dinner Tools online store. I know there isn't much there now, but more is coming. Also, you might consider becoming a patron over at Patreon. There's several levels of membership, but even a dollar an episode can go to feed a starving Labrador here in Las Vegas. Are you starving? Do they need to feed you? Oh, 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 who wants, who wants some more? Arr, come on, get him. Ah. <laughs> Who's a good girl? Come here. Yeah, that's my good hound. <laughs> okay, looks like I've been taking begging lessons from the hound. Anyway, guys and gals, that's it for today. Take care, and as always, shine on.